Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our series on partnership and we are going to look at partnership dissolution or dissolution of partnership business, the accounting procedures that are involved when a partnership wants to go into dissolution. Okay. Now, what you have to understand about dissolution is that dissolution of partnership simply means that the partnership is going to cease to exist. They are dissolving the business. The business will no longer exist. And when you are winding up a business like that, what are some of the things that are inherent in there? You are ceasing operations. You are no longer going to exist. Then it means that ideally, if the partners are two or three, or then no matter the number of partners, what you have to do is that you sell off all your assets, pay off all your liabilities, and the remaining cash will now be shared between the partners or among their partners according to their capital contributions this time we don't share according to the profit or loss sharing ratio we share according to the ratio of their capital contributions and that is what is going to happen and it's not anything difficult it's very simple okay previously when we look at the admission of a partner and all those ones what we do is that we, the, when there is admission of a partner, there are revaluations and other things. We try to reflect all those changes and then redraft a new statement of financial position because there is continuity of business. Over here, we are not going to draft any new statement of financial position because the business will not continue to exist. We are closing it down. And so we are going to sell all the assets, pay off all the liabilities, and then... If there is any cash that is remaining, we share according to the partner's ratio of capital contributions. Now, what happens is that there is going to be a realization account. That is the difference with the admission and the, the, this dissolution. Here, there is going to be a realization account. And with the realization account, that is the account that we are going to use to dispose of our assets and then share the profit or loss on the disposal. To our capital accounts and so we are going to open an account called realization account now this realization account has the idea of a revaluation account it's just that they are different in the way we handle them it is also like a profit or loss account where the credit side is for incomes and then the debit side is for expenses. Now, the principle with realization is that we open the account because we are realizing all the assets. We are selling them all off. That is the meaning. So we are going to use this account to sell the assets. Now, wh what happens is that once you are given the question, you close off all your asset balances and transfer them into the realization account. So like I said, you transfer all your asset balances into the realization account. And this is how the transfers will be done. Imagine you have these assets. Motor vehicle to be 2000 You have land to be $1,500. And then you have, let's say, furniture to be $200. Now, assuming this is all that you have, now, what you are going to do is that you are going, supposed to close off these accounts. They will be in the statement of financial position, but you are going to close them into the realization account. Now, this is how it's going to be done. I'm just using this as an example to let you know. So, let's say this is the motor vehicles account. Now, the motor vehicles account, we all know that it has a debit balance. And so, the balance brought forward will be $2,000. Now, dissolution or realization means that you are ending the business and there is no more going concern. And because there is no more going concern, you cannot close this with a balance carry down. The balance carry down enforces the going concern concept. It means that you are going to have a balance brought down and use the assets for business in the subsequent period. So what is going to happen is that you have to close this off. And so you close off the account and it will be in the name of realization. So that is the meaning. This is how you close off every asset. You do the same for land, furniture, and inventories. So you close off every asset account 
in the name of realization. And according to the double entry principle, every debit entry should have a corresponding credit entry and vice versa. And therefore, because you have credited motor vehicle account in the name of realization, you come to the realization account and you record motor vehicle on the debit side just to complete the double entry. So you put 2000 here, dollars. So this is how it's going to be done for land, for furniture, and for inventories, and any other assets. And so what it means is that for the assets on your statement of financial position, because you are dis dissolving the business, you are going to close all of them to realization. And so even without this working that I just showed, you should know that all these assets will end up here. And so in effect, land will be transferred here as 1500 Furniture will just come as $200. And every other asset will be closed to the debit side of a realization account. That is the meaning. Now, if it was a liability, liabilities have credit balances. And so liabilities would have ended up on the credit side. But like I told you, there is usually a different way that we treat the liabilities because liabilities are not your properties. You are supposed to pay them off because you are closing off the business. So what is going to happen is that you usually pay off the liabilities. And we are going to do that by illustrating with a question. And so just this is just the idea of realization. So let us assume that we have closed off all the assets to the debit of realization account. Now what is going to happen? I told you this account is like a profit and loss account. The credit side for revenues, this is for what? So this is the cost aspect of the asset. Now this is more like an expense portion and this is a receipt and so when we sell the asset take note when we sell the asset when we sell the asset the asset is also going to bring cash okay but we are going to sell the asset with this realization account so when you sell the asset on realization the double entry is that you debit your cash account or your bank account depending on which account because you know it's a cash inflow when you sell these ones so it's a cash inflow so you are going to debit your cash book or your cash account or bank account and then you are going to credit the realization account and so let us assume that these were the only three assets we brought them here and then we are selling them so it will be in the name of cash now take note that when you are selling the assets you are not going to all the time or always sell them exactly at their netbook values no you may either sell them at a higher value or at a lower value depending on the bargain and then the state of the assets at that time and so let us assume that this motor vehicle okay let us assume that this motor vehicle was sold the value is 2000 so let us assume we sold it for $3,000. And then the land was $1,500. let us assume that we sold the land for $5,000 instead of the $1,500. let us also assume that the furniture was sold for $100. Even though the value is $200, it was sold at a lower value. So you see that the income from the sale of the asset is coming here or the real, and then the cost of the asset is on the debit side now the realization account is there only not for selling and receiving but for any other income and expense relating to realization okay so let's for this simple that, that i have done let us assume that this is what we have and let's see if we have a profit or loss if you add up what you have gotten from the sale three five one you have eight thousand one hundred that is the money you have been able to generate from selling the assets and then the total value of the asset, 2, 1, 5, and 2, is 3,700. So you realize that you have received more than the value of the asset actually. And so if your asset value in total was 3,007, and then you sold it for 8,001, then you have made a profit on the sale or on realization. And that is the profit that is going to be shared for the partners here, just like we used to do for revaluation. And so if you take out 8,001 from 3,007, you have 4,300. So it means that there is a profit of 4,003 here that is waiting to be shared. And this profit of 4,003 will be shared for the partners because they are ending the business depending on their profit and loss sharing ratio. So if they are two and they are equal partners, you just share for them to close off the realization account. This is the idea of realization. And I repeat, close off all your assets to the debit, you sell them on the credit. That is the first part of the realization account. Then let me proceed with something more. Okay. Now, I told you that the realization account 
is not for only the assets. Every other expense or income at the date of dissolution will be taken care of by this account because we are not going to prepare any other profit and loss account. There is no more going concern. We are ending the business. And so what is going to happen is that if there is any additional income coming from somewhere, you credit that income to the realization account. If there is any other expense that is in relation to realization, it will come to the debit of the realization account because it is serving like a profit or loss account. And so usually when you are doing realization or you are dissolving a business, there could be some expenses incurred. At least you could bring in some experts to help you in the legal procedures and some other things like that. So there could be some realization expenses. These realization expenses will also be paid out or out of cash. Did you realize that I put here cash colon before I wrote these things? Therefore, the corresponding entries for this proceeds from the sale is going into the cash account or the bank account, not the motor vehicle or land account because we've already close that off and we are not going back again that is why i put here cash so all these things are just to tell you which other assets uh, which assets we are selling but the main entry there or the corresponding entry is the cash account in the same way if you are paying any dissolution expense it's going to be paid out of your cash or your bank and therefore once it's an expense it will be on the debit side and so if there was any you could be you could see it either as dissolution expenses or realization expenses so what you have to do is not just to write the realization expense but you see cash or bank colon then you see realization expenses then you put that also there so that is how you are going to go about realization expenses okay and then there could be other income as well like discount received from your creditors you are going to pay your creditors and they they gave you some discount that discount received must come to the credit of realization account because it is other income it is other remember discount but this is how it's going to come now let us look at something let's assume that we had payables trade payables to be four thousand that is how much we owe our short-term creditors. And then we open the creditors account. Now, it has a, a credit balance. So our balance brought forward is 4,000. Okay. Now, we are supposed to pay off our creditors. And so we should have paid off all the 4,000. This is the procedure. And it is going in the name of cash or bank so that the corresponding entry will appear on the credit side of the cash account. Now take note. If the creditor decides to give a discount of let's say 10%, then it means that we have to take off the 10% from this 4,000 before we pay. So 10% of $4,000 will be $400. And therefore we are actually paying 3,600. That is what we are paying. Okay. And so we are going to pay cash of 3600 but remember we are ending the business there is no more going concern so we cannot leave the accounts like this if we leave the accounts like this then it means that there will still be a balance on the creditors account so that 400 is a discount so we call it discount received and it is going into the realization account so it is realization discount received if you don't call it realization and you just call it discount received okay it means that you have to open a corresponding account called discount received account and credit that and that means that you are still doing a going concern business remember the idea is that we are closing off the business and so we will call this discount we we'll first call it realization and then we can explain that it is discount okay so that corresponding entry of this 400 will appear on the credit side of the realization account in the name of creditors discount 400 so these are the dynamics of the realization you are just trying to close off everything about the business and then from there you would share the profit for them and then you are going to prepare capital account 
for them and then there will be a cash account now the two main accounts after you close off the realization the two most important accounts that are left is the cash and the capital because even if they are current accounts you have to transfer their current account balances into the capital because there is no more going concern so that you have just one account for the partners and then you have a cash or bank account now you finish preparing your bank account you finish preparing your capital account the capital account balances cannot be called balance carry down because we are closing it off and we have to pay that off to the partners and what are we going to pay with we are going to pay with the bank uh, the cash or the bank the money in the bank so what is going to happen is that after doing everything the total amount that is left in the cash book or the bank account should be the same as the total of their capital balances so that you can pay them off without any remainder if it happens that you finish your dissolution procedures and the balance on your cash account or bank account is more than the total of their capital balances then there is a mistake somewhere you have made a mistake because you cannot pay them and still have some cash who is going to take that and if you finish and the balance on their capital account is also more than the cash why are you going to get money to pay them and so that is one secret about realization when you are doing a question on dissolution of partnership the examiner always expects you that after finishing everything the total balance on your cash or bank account is the same as the total of their capital account balances so that you can pay them off without any remainder and that is what will make you know that you have done the right thing all right so there, has, there may be some other adjustments to do but i'm not going to take too much of your time i just decided to present the concept to you we are going to take a question that is what we are going to do now and then the question will help us to understand it better so i'm going to take a question even though it's quite complex but it's not too complex i'm going to take a question that will help everyone to understand the concept and then from there we'll look at some other tougher questions in the future but for now let us look at this question and try to help us to understand the concept that i'm explaining on the solution okay Cecilia and Veronica, after working together in partnership for 10 years in Accra, decided to dissolve their partnership in order to join their husbands in Kumase. They shared profit and loss equally. The following is their statement of financial position as at 30th September 2019. So we have the non-current assets to be premises. 24,480, we have furniture, 10,080, we have motor vehicles, 25,000, giving us a total of 59,560. Then we have the current assets to be inventory or stock, 75,800. Then sundry receivables to be 28,800. We have cash at bank to be 9,600 and then cash in hand to be 4,800. The total assets is 178,560. And then we have their capital accounts. Capital accounts to be Cecilia is 86,400. And then Veronica is 57,600. Giving us a total of 144,000. So under the current liabilities, we have sundry payables to be 34,560 giving us total equity and liabilities to be 178,560 Ghana cities. So we move on. You are given the following additional information. Inventory was sold for 60,000 Ghana cities. Inventory was sold for 60,000 Ghana cities. I, I. Premises was sold for 22,250 Ghana cities. I, I, I. Motor vehicles were sold for 18,000 Ghana cities. Ivan, sundry receivables realized 25,000 Ghana cities. Then, V, discount of 6,912 Ghana cities was received when the partnership paid its creditors. And then, VI says that Cecilia took over the furniture and paid. 10,080. Okay. So that is the value at which we sold it to here. Then VII. Realization expenses amounted to 3,500 Ghana cities. 
and we are told that the dissolution was completed by 31st October 2019. You are required to open the account and show all entries needed to bring the firm to a close. All right, so this is a question that we are going to look at. Very simple. They just give us a statement of financial position and we are told that they are dissolving the partnership. And we've been given the terms and conditions of the dissolution. That is how much we sold each asset and how we paid off our creditors. And then also we've been told that um, one of the partners, Cecilia, took over the furniture and paid. And so that is another side that we are going to look at. When a partner takes an asset, what do we do? Does a person pay with physical cash? No. What we usually do is that that asset that has been taken will be debited to the partner's capital account so that it will reduce the net amount that will be paid to the partner. But if you debit it to the partner's account and at the end of the period, you realize that the capital account is less, it cannot pay all the asset, then the difference will be paid by the partner in cash. So that is the idea. And then we also had realization expenses. Okay, so we are going to do... Normally, instead of saying open the necessary account, you could have been required this way that A, prepare A, the realization account, B, the partner's capital account, C, the cash account to close the business. These are the main three, the realization account, the capital account, and the cash account. That is the main three that you are going to use to close. The creditor's account and the other accounts, creditor's account may be necessary, yes, but most of the time, the others are workings the transfer of all the assets into the realization will come as working so some, sometimes you may show them sometimes they are not required to be shown you just have to understand the concept so personally i think once you understand that all of them will be closed into the realization account we can just move them there except you don't understand but for exam purposes who knows how the marking scheme has been structured you may show workings in the exam okay so let us begin strictly Cecilia and Veronica. So let's open up the realization account. Okay. So that is the first thing we are going to do. So let's go back to the question. This is very simple. We are just going to transfer all our assets into the realization account. So in the statement of financial position, we have premises to be 24,480, furniture to be 10,080, and motor vehicles to be 25,000. So let us transfer all those non-current assets into the realization account, the debit side. Remember that I told you they will appear on the debit side. So the value for premises is 24480 And then we have um, furniture, which is also 10080 And then we have motor vehicles, which was also valued at 25000 What I'm doing is that I'm just closing off the asset and transferring them. I've already explained the procedure, just that I'm not showing the working. Because this is how it would have been for all of them. Um, for premises, would have been a balance brought forward of 24,480. And then we will say realization, 24,480. Then we'll close it. We'll do the same for furniture. So once the realization is here, corresponding entry comes to the debit. So it is like that for all of them. So don't be too worried that I'm just bringing them straight away. Okay, once you understand the concept, you may not have to do this working before you know this is where they belong. Okay. And then we have some current assets as well. We will transfer all the, whether current or non-current assets, we transfer all. So we have inventory to be 75,800. And then we have sundry receivables to be 28,800. So inventories also come 75800 and then receivables the value of receivables is 28800 
Okay, so that is it. Now, the other two assets that are left is the cash at bank and the cash in hand. We are not going to transfer that. Please pay attention. <laughs> we are not going to transfer your cash. There is no need because the cash, the reason why we are transferring these assets into realization is that we are going to sell them and raise cash to share. But if you already have cash, why, why are you going to sell the cash? So please, we don't transfer cash in bank and cash in hand. We just put it somewhere in the cash account. Then we convert these things into cash, add that before we share according to their capital accounts. So please take note. So these are the only assets to be transferred to the realization account. So now that we've transferred the assets, the next thing to do is to sell them. So we go and look for how much the question told us we should sell or it has been sold. So go to the additional information and you see that we are told stock was sold for 60,000. Premises was sold for 22,250. So these are the cash values that we have realized from the asset. And so we come to the credit side and we'll say cash, colon. And therefore, I'm going to list whatever I'm going to list is going into the cash account. That is the meaning. And so we are selling the inventory for 60,000. So inventory is bringing us cash of 60,000. And then uh, premises for 22,250. So the premises is also giving us 22,250, 22,250 Ghana cities. And then we are told that the motor vehicles were sold for 18,000. So motor vehicles. <laughs> it looks like they are all being sold at lower values. <laughs> and then what next? We are also told that sundry receivables realized 25,000. What is the value of receivables? 28,800. And they are realizing 25,000. It means that some of the debtors did not pay. So take note. <laughs> So receivables has 25,000. And then let us look for more. The next information is about discounts. We are told that discounts of 6,912 was received when the partner paid its creditors. So that is discount received. And I explain how discounts are treated in the creditors account. Okay, we are going to actually prepare the creditors account. But once we are on the realization, let us do, do that entry first. Okay, so these ones are coming for cash. But the discount is not coming for cash. It is going to the creditors account. And so I told you that this side is for all incomes. And discount received is an income. So you see creditors. Discount. And the amount is 6912 So that is it for the discount received. And then we continue. Cecilia took over the furniture and paid 10,080. Cecilia took over the furniture and paid 10,000. So now, I told you that this payment by Cecilia is not going to come by cash. So it's not part of our cash item. It is going to be debited to Cecilia's capital account to reduce the capital that the, the net balance that we are going to pay to her because she is taking off an asset. And so we we'll come still to the realization account because Remember that once she's taking it off, we are selling it to her. So it's an income. Forget about the fact that we took cash or not. Once it is going to her, it will be credited to the realization account. And so Cecilia took over the furniture. And so we see capital account. Remember that it's going to Cecilia's capital. So the corresponding entry goes into the capital. I am so much concerned about the corresponding entry. I am so much concerned because... If you don't put the right corresponding entry here and you just come and write Cecilia, well, you may have a tick, but I don't know if you put Cecilia here and you take it. If it's me, if I'm being very technical or you are writing a professional exam, you may lose mark for that. Okay? In academics, sometimes we consider, but with a professional exam, if you do, if you do this, if you don't write a capital and you put just Cecilia there, you may be deducted a professional mark. Who knows? So you just have to make sure that you are doing and applying the right accounting principles because every debit entry has a corresponding credit entry and the corresponding entry of this one is going to the capital account. Cecilia's capital. So you say capital, Cecilia. And then the furniture's value is, she's taking it 
for 10,080. So as for Cecilia, she took over the furniture at the same value. It could have been less or more because it's just like selling it. Now, you see, someone would have preferred to write Cecilia furniture. 10,080. I have not brought the furniture. But this is even more appropriate than just writing the um, furniture without the corresponding entry itself of capital. So that is 10,080 for the furniture. Or you can put that in bracket if you have space. Furniture. 10,080. Alright. So that is how to go about this. And then the final condition is that realization expenses amounted to 3500 i told you about realization expenses that we pay them it's an expense but we pay out of cash it is going to go into the debit side of the realization account because it's an expense so you say cash you see i didn't just write realization i said cash then you say realization expenses and the amount of 3500 because the corresponding entry is going to the cash account. If you are able to put the right corresponding entries, you don't have a problem. Because all these things that we have done, we are going to do accounts for them and we are going to transfer them into their corresponding entries. So please take note. So this is it. And that is all about the conditions we have. So we can close all the realization account and then know whether there was profit or loss in realization and then we share for them. But it looks like the debit side is more than the credit side. And once the debit side is more than the credit side, we are going to have a loss. Because it's like the expenditure part is more than the revenue. So we are going to have a loss on realization and we are going to share for the partners in their profit and loss sharing ratio. Take note. So let me extend the bar and then let's try to balance all these accounts. Okay, so the total of the debit side is more than that of the credit side. And the total is 167,660. So we put the same here, 167,660. Now we find the difference. The difference between these two sides is 25,418. This is the loss on realization. However, it should be shared for the partners in their profit and loss sharing ratio. Now, according to the question, are they share profit and loss equally? So we are going to share this figure equally for the partners and when we are sharing it's going to their capital account so you say capitals cecilia and then you put veronica the amount is 25,418. but when you split it into two you are going to have 12,709 12,709 for both of them so i am cleaning this off okay so the two of them sums up to that amount and then we have closed the realization account. So this is how to prepare the realization account for the partners. We have shared their losses. This is loss on realization. And so we are going to proceed to prepare the capital accounts for the partners and the cash account to close off the partnership as well as the creditors account. All right, so we, we are going to prepare the capital account and then the cash account. But before we prepare that, let's prepare the creditors account to show the payment because we've already enjoyed the discount. And so I'm going to use this space to prepare the creditors account for the partners. So let us pick the balance brought forward from the creditors. That is the value of the payable, sorry, the value of payables in the statement of financial position. The value of payables in the statement of financial positions was 34,560 and that becomes your balance brought forward for creditors account so balance brought forward 34,560 and then we have enjoyed the discount so you see that i made the corresponding entry creditors on the credit side of the realization so it will come to the debit of creditors account in the name of realization discount And that is 6,912. And therefore, the difference is what we are paying. Because even though we are paying off our creditors, we are told that we have enjoyed a discount of 6,912. And therefore, we, the difference is what we are paying. And when we check, when we subtract this from that, the difference that we are supposed to pay is 27,648. So 27,648. 
and then and then we'll call it cash so we are paying off all our creditors and that means we don't owe the creditors again giving us a total of 34 5 60 34 5 60 so that is how to go by the creditors account all right and then we prepare the capital accounts for the partners and then the cash account to close it off so Okay, so we have capital accounts. And I'm always particular about you adding S to the accounts. Very, very important. So Cecilia, Veronica. Cecilia, Veronica. You put your currency signs under each of the columns okay so let's try extending it all right so these are capital accounts now we are going to prepare them in the columnar form as we have done so the first thing to do is to transfer their capital account balances as a balance brought forward you know the statement of financial position provided some capital balances for their partners cecilia's capital is eighty six thousand four hundred, and veronica's capital is fifty seven six hundred, and so eighty six four hundred and fifty seven 600 that will be balance brought forward so that is it for their capital accounts then this is where I, I i was telling you something you see that you come to the realization account wherever you see capital you transfer that is why i was particular about using the right corresponding entries okay and so we come to the realization account there was capital where cecilia took over the furniture it's on the it was on the credit side so we can we transfer to the debit side that is a corresponding entry and it will be in the name of realization where cecilia is taking over the furniture so furniture and it is going under the column of cecilia ten thousand and eighty so over here we are just doing a transfer of entries ten thousand of eighty just a transfer of entries and then we look at the share of the loss as well Cecilia and Veronica. So that is also on the credit of realization. So it will appear on the debit of the capital account. So it is coming as realization loss. And the amounts are the same. 12,709. 12,709. Okay, so that is how to go about that for the loss as well. We transfer for them. Okay, and so as you can see, there is nothing more to bring to capital so that means we are done with the capital account except the final closing off okay so this is all about the capital account if there were any other things that will come to capital would have brought them but here there is nothing more so we leave the capital accounts listen very carefully this is the closing stage and this is where a lot of us don't understand when it comes to the closing of accounts for dissolution leave the capital account then go and prepare your cash account when you are done with the cash account, then you check. The final balance on the capital account uh, on the cash account should be the same as the final balance on the capital account. So we are going to close them simultaneously. So let me just leave the capital account and then prepare a cash account. Okay. So cash account for the partners. Now, with the cash account, we were already given some balances in the statement of financial position. We have cash at bank to be 9,600, cash in hand to be 4,008. Now, even though this is cash account, we are going to start with the balance as cash in hand. But we are also going to bring the bank balance as well because we have to combine the cash, whether it's in hand or at bank. 
because we are finished we are ending the business so we add up the two as our opening balances and then we will now take care of the cash transactions and so we'll come and say balance brought forward for cash it was 4800 that was the opening balance for cash in hand and then cash at banks balance was 9600 ghana cities so this is how you go about this make sure that your opening balance is a combination of the cash and the bank because we are ending the business there is nothing more to keep in the bank there is no need to keep money in the bank again and now that we are done with the opening balance like i told you you can just refer to your realization account and you are good to go and then you come to the capital account wherever you see cash you do the corresponding entry so you see if you don't put the right corresponding entries it's going to make the rest of the account difficult for you you may forget what to bring to the cash account that is why i always admonish you to put the right corresponding entry okay so now going into the realization account we have these items all coming in cash and so the corresponding entry will appear on the debit because it's had a credit of realization it will appear on the debit of the cash account and it is coming in the name of realization colon and then we can list them inventory sixty thousand we had premises in cash twenty two thousand two hundred and fifty ghana cities and then there was motor vehicles motor vehicles of 18,000 cash and then finally receivables also brought some cash and the amount is 25,000 so these are all for the cash as far as the realization is concerned and then the creditors to we paid creditors by cash that one appeared on the debit of the creditors account 27,648. So it's coming to the credit of the cash account in the name of creditors. 27,648. Okay. And then we are not done. There was one more cash that you may forget. That is the dissolution expenses. The dissolution expenses was also paid by cash. 3,500 on the debit of the realization account. So that also comes to the credit in the name of realization. Dissolution expenses. 3,500. And so at this point, we have brought everything that needs to be brought into the cash account. And then the capital account is also ready. So we are going to balance them off. Okay. Now when you get to the balancing point, this is what you do. You first have to balance off the capital account. And so let's close off the capital account. That's the first thing you do. Make sure you balance the capital account first. Now, if you are balancing off the capital account, the total of the credit side is more than that of the debit side. So you put the same figures here. 86,400, 600. Now, the difference we are balancing for Cecilia between the two sides, which should have been called balance carry down. Now, we cannot call it balance carry down again because... We are closing off the accounts because we are ending the business. And the difference is 63,611. And when you check for Veronica, the difference will be 44,891. Now, this is the difference that should have been called balance carry down. But because we are closing off the business, we are paying them off. So we will call it cash. That is the meaning. So we are calling this cash because we are paying off the balance of their capital accounts. Now take note. When we come to the cash account, we are going to balance it as well. When we balance off the cash account, we are going to have a difference. The difference which should have been called balance carry down. It's no more going to be called balance carry down. But the difference should be the same as the difference of the capital account. That is what I said earlier. If I add this 63,611 and the 44,891 together, difference of the cash account, so that it can exactly pay their capital account balances. 
if you finish your work and the difference you have on the cash book or the cash account is more than the capital or less than the combined capital then it means that you did something wrong and something is not right so that is what you should do so we are going to have the difference and if the difference is the same then we will just call it capitals because once we've called this cash the corresponding entry should come into the cash account as capitals and then we pay off okay and so we we'll say capitals because we are bringing the corresponding entry from the capital account and it, it will be in the name of cecilia and veronica and then we are going to put their capital accounts here 63 611 and veronica is 44 eight nine one and when we add the cash account should balance if you put you transfer their capital account and you add and it did not balance then there is something wrong somewhere and so the totals for the cash account is 139,650 139,650 now if you take your calculator and then verify you realize that the difference in the cash account is going to be 108,502 this is going to be the difference and this is a combination of these two figures when you add the two capital accounts you are going to have 108,502 and therefore that should be exactly the balance on your cash account so whenever you are finishing the solution of partnership you are closing off the capital and the cash and the differences must be the same so that you can exactly pay off the capital accounts okay I'm sure your understanding has been enhanced. This brings us to the end of our lesson on the solution of partnership. Of course, in the near future, very soon, or maybe upon your request, I would solve a more complex question. But I believe that this question has enough to increase your understanding. And I'm sure that when you pick other questions and you practice, you should be able to uh, solve them and then master the topic. So we are done with the solution. We are also going to look at other areas of partnership. I told you like amalgamation and all that. So continue to follow us. Subscribe to the channel if you are yet to subscribe. Share this video. Let others also have a benefit. And then together we grow. Until we meet again next time, it is bye for now. Thank you.